Bill is looking for a quick way to check charging system operation. He feels that complete testing of the entire system shouldn't be necessary on every charging system job. Let's see how Larry straightens him out. What's the problem, Bill? The only time I ever see you looking at a service manual is when you're in trouble. Uh, no trouble, Larry, but I can't see why I have to wade through all this stuff just to check the charging system. <laughs> well, don't let it throw you. That testing procedure is a real time saver when you're troubleshooting a tough one or making regulator adjustments. But if you only want to quick check the system operation, a visual inspection and a charging voltage check may be all that's needed. For example, when you do a tune-up, check to make sure the battery and charging voltage are within specs. You see, low voltage can hold engine performance down, even after a tune-up. On the other hand, if the charging voltage is too high, distributor points and other electrical parts can be damaged. And the job will bounce. Okay, so how do you make an operational check? First, check the obvious, like alternator drive belt condition and tension. Glazed, worn, or loose belts will slip and reduce alternator output. In case of a low battery, don't forget the not-so-obvious, like a constant drain from a trunk light that doesn't shut off. Good tip, Tech. Now, if the battery appears to be in good condition, then check both battery cables and the body ground cable from the engine to the bulkhead. Also make sure the bulkhead connector is pushed in all the way, and that all charging system wiring and connections are in good condition. Next. Connect a test voltmeter across the battery terminals and disconnect the ignition coil primary so the engine won't start. If battery voltage does not drop below 9.5 when you crank the engine, the battery charge is high enough to allow a charging voltage test. For a quick check of charging voltage, move the positive voltmeter lead to the ignition terminal of the regulator. Hook up the ignition coil primary lead and start the engine. Now, with the engine running near fast idle speed and the system operating at normal temperature, the charging voltage should be within specs. Okay, but what do you do if there's no charge or the voltage isn't right? Well, if there's no charge, you can make a few quick tests to narrow down the cause. But understand, these are only preliminary checks, so don't assume that they'll take the place of the regular tests in the service manual. Now, the general makeup of the charging system is simple. There's a charging or alternator output circuit a field or rotor supply circuit, an alternator, and a voltage regulator. Now remember, the charging circuit is normally hot at all times, so we should get a voltage indication at the alternator output terminal, even with the engine stopped. If the terminal voltage is lower than battery voltage, there's high resistance someplace. No voltage at all means an open charging circuit. If you've got battery voltage at the alternator, you then disconnect the field wire from its terminal at the alternator to take the regulator out of the field circuit. Connect a jumper wire between the field terminal and the output terminal to supply current to the alternator rotor. Be careful with that jumper. A short to ground may burn out the fusible link. And remember that normal field current is only about two and a half amps. If you get a hot spark when you connect the jumper to the field terminal, the rotor circuit is probably shorted. Thank you, Tech. Now, with the field jumper in place, run the engine at moderate speed and check the voltmeter. A voltage increase indicates that there's alternator output, and the trouble is probably somewhere in the field circuit. No output indication points to alternator trouble. If the alternator seems to be okay, disconnect the field circuit wire from the ignition terminal of the voltage regulator. Then connect the output terminal end of the jumper directly to the field circuit wire. Again, run the engine and check the voltmeter. If you have a charge indication, it means that the field circuit itself is probably okay, and you'll have to check out the voltage regulator. What if the system charges too much or too little? Well, that opens a whole new ball game. The cause may be high resistance, a short, or an open somewhere in the system, and that's where the service manual tests come to the rescue. Can't you simply adjust the voltage regulator? Not on your life, Bill. Adjusting the regulator before you make the other tests can really foul things up. Larry, why don't you give Bill your slant on making the charging system tests? It never hurts anyone to review from time to time. Yeah, sounds like a good idea, Tech. We can do a checkout on this job here. Charging system tests are made in five steps. Battery, field circuit resistance, charging circuit resistance, current output, and voltage regulator operation. Be sure to follow this sequence so you'll know you're getting accurate indications. 
You see, test specifications for alternator output and regulator operation are based on knowing that field circuit and charging circuit resistances are within specs. The regulator setting spec, in turn, is based on the output of the alternator and a fully charged battery. Now, beginning at the battery, there's always the possibility that lead oxide is formed under the cable connector clamps. This thin, dark oxide coating can build up enough resistance to upset regulator operation and may put the whole electrical system out of business. As a regular part of a tune-up or any electrical system test, always brighten up the battery posts and inner surfaces of the cable clamps with a wire brush so you'll be sure there's no high resistance at these points. And while you're at it, check the terminals at the other ends of the cables for tightness and general condition. Don't forget the body ground cable connections at the engine and bulkhead. Be sure the cable terminals don't turn as they're tightened, or you may break the cable strands. After inspecting the cables, we begin the charging system tests by checking battery charge and capacity. If you find a partial charge, sulfation, or defective cells, you'll have to install a good, fully charged battery before you go any farther. How about simply clipping on a good battery with booster cables? That won't work unless you disconnect the low battery. Otherwise, the good battery will discharge into the low one and drop the voltage. Also, the regulator will keep the alternator output higher than we want for testing as it tries to charge the low battery. If the battery is in good shape, we can go on to the field circuit. The field and charging circuits share a common path from the battery to the junction terminal of the starter relay, through the bulkhead connector, and to the ammeter. From the ammeter, the two circuits are separate. The field circuit continues from the ammeter to the ignition switch. From there, it passes back through the bulkhead connector to the regulator. It then goes to the alternator field terminal and through the rotor windings to ground. Since current normally flows through the field circuit when the ignition switch is on, we can check circuit resistance without running the engine. We measure field circuit resistance by checking the voltage drop across the circuit from the battery to the voltage regulator with the primary ignition wire disconnected from the ballast resistor. The voltage drop indication is small, so we use a voltmeter with a scale graduated in tenths of a volt. Any questions at this point, Bill? Why do you disconnect the primary ignition wire from the ballast resistor? When the wire is connected, the ignition primary and the field circuit both draw current when the distributor points are closed. This forms a parallel circuit and allows enough extra current flow to upset our resistance test. Here's why. Any extra current heats the field circuit and increases its resistance enough to produce misleading voltage drop indications. Now for the actual field circuit resistance test, the positive lead of the voltmeter clips to the positive post of the battery, and the negative lead goes to the field terminal of the voltage regulator. This hookup doesn't test alternator rotor resistance. We'll check that later in the charging circuit test. The field circuit voltage drop should not exceed 55 hundredths of a volt. More than this indicates high resistance somewhere between the battery and the regulator field terminal. Make sure all lights and accessories are off so there isn't any extra current flow. To locate points of high resistance, touch the negative voltmeter lead to each connection in the field circuit. When you reach a point where the voltage drops sharply, the trouble is between that terminal and the last point tested. A voltage drop of one to two tenths across the regulator is normal, so don't condemn the regulator for a two tenths drop. To save time, you can check from the regulator to the bulkhead connector first, and then work backward from the battery to the starter relay. Any high resistance which remains is in the bulkhead connector or in the ammeter and ignition switch circuit. Wiggle the wires and connectors while you watch the voltmeter. Movement of the pointer can mean you found a loose or dirty connection or a broken wire. Don't overlook the possibility of poor connections in the bulkhead connector itself. And let's not overlook the fact that we'll run out of sound if someone doesn't turn the record right now.